This is John Bauman, and this is Real Life, Real Music. <laughs> Real Life, Real Music Radio, with your host, Kyle Hutton. I don't have any shoelaces in my shoes, so uh, <laughs> it's just, that's just my icebreaker. <laughs> it didn't go that well. Okay. Man, you completely, you know, at some point in the show, I was just going to look down and make a statement about you young kids and your fashion uh, trends. But, okay, so go ahead and tell the story. You actually lost your shoelaces. Well, they, they were, uh, they tore, because I'm a pretty thorough tire, and uh, <laughs> I just couldn't have uh, one shoelace and one shoe, so I just, just did the deed and took them both out. It's a really compelling story, I know. <laughs> we're going to be here all night, folks. Don't worry. Don't worry. Man, thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. I, I, I know you've got a couple of shows, and, and this worked out to be a stop along the way. And Man, I appreciate you taking time out of your schedule. Come sit down and talk to us. I'm looking forward to it, Kyle. Thank you so much. We had a great conversation up in the green room, and it's, uh, it's great to be here. Yeah. Man, uh, well, we're going to have an opportunity to do what we do here, and that is... You know, me ask lots of questions about how and why you do what you do, but if you would just maybe pick pick one out that you want to start off with, tell us about it, and, and uh, sing us a song. Sure thing. Um, I've had a hell of a 2019, and we're only, uh, I guess, 90 days into it. Um, I got the bright idea to go to Nashville, Tennessee, and cut a record at the beginning of the year, and... Uh, I wasn't very happy with it, and I've learned that experience is what you get when you don't get what you wanted. And I went to Nashville and I made a record that just didn't sound like me, so I uh, called up some good friends, and we recut the whole thing, and we just finished a couple weeks ago. And I'm very happy this time around. So this song is about making every single day count, and it's called The uh, Next Ride Around the Sun. Should take your wife out dancing and remind her that she's always been the North Star, the lighthouse that guides you back in. You should call up your old man, see if he's up for having a beer. Do it while you can, you don't know when he'll no longer be here. You should. You can't slow it down, you can't turn it around Nobody gonna get a rerun Make it count on the next ride around the sun You should ask for forgiveness And forgive others in return Sense and build in a bridge just to let it burn. Don't fret over some treasure. Be grateful for the journey you're on. There's nothing that you can take with you when your time is gone. You should know nobody's got a day guaranteed. You should know. As you age, time is gathering speed You can't slow it down You can't turn it around Nobody gonna get a rerun Make it count On the next ride around the sun should know nobody's got a day guaranteed you should know as you age time is gathering speed you can't slow it down you can't turn it around nobody gonna get a rerun 
Make it count on the next right around the sun I'll make it count on the next right around the sun Thank you. Thanks a lot. So as you age, time is gathering speed. That's correct. I think. That is so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. We're songwriters, aren't we? That's, that's our job, man. That's our job. So, so tell me that, that line, uh, that, that whole song almost feels like may, maybe a, I don't know, uh, a little further down the line in the journey from Old Stone Church? I would say so. That's yeah. A, that's tell, so tell, tell me where, I hear a lot of that, a lot of maybe kind of the, the, the healing and the grieving process, that kind of stuff that leads us to those thoughts, but tell us a little more about that song. Um, this is going to sound ridiculous, but I... Uh, you know, you do this every weekend, kind of weekend warrior style. You play Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then you kind of have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday at home. And, you know, I, w I, I was missing a void in my life of seeing, seeing friends and, and family, and I was just thinking y your time with them is so valuable and it's so few and far between when you're, when you're gone so much. And uh, this sounds ridiculous, but I went to Las Vegas with a bunch of my, with a bunch of my friends and had a, a hell of a good time as one <laughs> does in Las Vegas. And I just remember thinking... That was a lot of fun, and uh, life is good, and life is short, and life is sweet, and I just, it seems to me as you get older, like things happen, time goes by faster. I mean, here we are, it's April 4th or 5th, I don't know what day it is, but uh, time just seems to fly by, and it just, I felt like it was important to, to, to give some credit to uh, the importance of just enjoying the moment, if you will, you know, yeah. you know. Yeah, that's great. Well, I, I appreciate the reminder and I appreciate the package that, that you that you put that in. Yeah, that's great. Um, you know, one of the things that, that kind of follows you uh, as a songwriter and, and it's I think it's because of the way you take, you know, what might be some universal truths or things that we all can nod our head at, but you package them in a way that maybe hasn't been heard before uh and and uh man that's drawn some comparisons for you even as a young writer to some some guys that we would consider sage writers like guy clark and even even more our peers like bruce robeson and guys like that yeah. man how does that how does that feel how do you wear that how do you accept that uh, it feels really good. It feels really humbling. Uh, also, you know, I'm, I'm typically a guy where it's uh, me and my three bandmates and then about 15 or 20 people out in the audience, so nobody's, nobody's getting too big of an ego, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, but uh, golly, Guy Clark, um, such a bedrock, a foundation of what, what I do and, or what I've wanted to do and to have a, any comparison from anybody, it, it really means a lot, but uh, those are some big shoes to fill, and there's a lot of mileage and a lot of work and a lot of things that need to happen to, to kind of even, even just stay on that path, you know. So one of, the, uh, one, one of, the, one of my favorite questions after getting to sit down with, with a whole bunch of artists at this point uh, is, is this one, and every once in a while I get a look like, why would you ask me this question so early in the set? But there's a reason I would ask you so early in the set because I don't want to ask you later and you have already played it. Yeah. So uh, I want to ask you the question. Um, if someone only got to hear one song that you've written, yeah. like literally they were only going to get to hear one, which one would you pick and, and, and why? Uh well, it might have been that one, but uh, uh, no, um, I have a song that uh, means a lot to me, and it's kind of a mission statement song, and it's called, uh, it's called Here I Come, and that would probably be the one. It's kind of been my, my, my slogan, I guess, for the last few years, so, yeah. You want to play it? I guess that's the setup right there, isn't it? Dude, all I can do is alley-oop the ball. You, have, <laughs> that's to, you right. have to dunk it. I am wearing a dinosaur shirt, so, you know. <laughs> 
Uh, there's a little bit of backstory. I apologize if you've heard it before. Uh, me and my band were lucky enough to play a gig at HEB one time um, <laughs> in Austin, Texas, at uh, Canig Lane and Burnett Road. Um, and an HEB gig is one of the gigs you don't put on your website, if you know what I'm saying. You don't want anybody to know about it. Um, they were paying, so I was like, absolutely. It was a good paycheck on a Tuesday afternoon. Um, but me and my, my band were in the produce section of an HEB, and we were playing <laughs> alt-country songs in our skinny jeans. And uh, believe me, we were uh, completely in the wrong place at the wrong time. Um, and like I said, you don't want anybody to know about it necessarily. Um, and they had told me, you know, we're not live streaming or anything. Well, it turns out they were... Well, let me, let me back up. I'm a little rusty here. Um, we played the gig at HEB, four dudes in our skinny jeans in the produce section, yada, yada. I walk out to my car thinking, thank God nobody knows about this gig. And uh, I remember opening up my phone and having a bunch of text messages from friends saying, Bauman, uh, man, you have made it. Um, congrats on the HEB gig. <laughs> and I remember thinking, uh, well, uh, how do you know about this? And apparently the people who put it on live streamed it over the city of Austin's Facebook page. So that was a, a lot of fun. 35,000 people saw me and my boys in our skinny jeans in the produce section at HEB playing all country songs. Yeah. Um, anyhow, so many humbling gigs and so many wonderful gigs. We were lucky enough to open for Willie Nelson a handful of times. Um, that was a lot of fun. Also very terrifying. Um, I remember thinking, wow, we have made it. Um, life is good. And then a week later, we were playing a book fair in Dallas, Texas at a teacher's convention. <laughs> and uh, so short story long, long story short, uh, this thing kind of goes up and goes down. But uh, through it all, you just kind of have a kind of have a good attitude, I guess. So the song is called Here I Come and Mission State. When I was a young boy, my father asked what I want to be. I said, I want to be a flatlander, Jimmy Dale, Butcher Ely. I want to play guitar and sing and make the people stomp the floor. I want to write the best of the best and be a high plains troubadour. He bought a beat-up Takamini for me on my 14th birthday With a couple Terry Allen tapes I play to every day I started writing songs that sucked on the surface and cliché I must have wrote 200 bad ones before a good one came my way now I'm damn near almost 30 with this trailer to load My name is misspelled on a marquee 500 miles down the road and My skin is so much thicker now that I've been in this shit It's too soon for accolades and it's too late to quit So here I am Here I come I've never been much at anything But tying words to a string Picking with two fingers Using my ears to sing and looking up at pictures of John T. Floors and Green Hall And paying my respects to the great ones on the wall I think back on afternoons when this was all just a dream I still got big ambitions and a head full of steam As I look out past the curtain and out onto the floor I'm one day closer to a high plains troubadour Yeah, I'm damn near almost 30 with this trailer to load My name is misspelled on a marquee 500 miles down the road my skin is so much thicker now that I've been in this shit It's 
too soon for accolades and it's too late to quit so here i am and here i come Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks so much. <laughs> Man, yeah, you talk about humbling, right? H-E-B. <laughs> <laughs> well, that and, okay, what about, uh, what is the biggest, you, you know, you mentioned the marquee, okay? Right. First off, how many, how, many, how many venues have misspelled your last name on the marquee? Oh, m very many. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite stories is uh, we, we opened for Pat, for Pat Green one time, and uh, my mom was out in the crowd, and I think Pat had had a couple of uh, apple juices, and if you know what I'm saying. And uh, he called me uh, Josh Blockman, and uh, <laughs> it was great. My mom was out in the crowd, and she's, she texted my wife, who was uh, backstage, and she was like, don't tell John that Pat Green just called him Josh Blockman. It's like, Mom, I'm uh, like 50 feet uh, by the stage. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, Captain Obvious. Yeah. Yeah, yeah a lot. But, I, you know, I think it's a regular thing. I think everybody deals with it. It's just part of it, I guess. Yeah. You know, it is. And, and I, I think especially when you're, you know, the earlier you are in your career and you think, oh, man, there's, there's this article that's going to come out in the paper. Or there's this that's going to be written. And then you open it and you read it and they like, got one of the just most, you know, important <laughs> facts wrong <laughs> on, yeah. the, on the articles. Yeah. Difficult. So uh, one of the lines in there, I, I think, that that can probably hit everybody uh, because I, I think we've all felt this way, whether it's music business or career or wherever it is, is the, you know, uh, way too soon to quit. You know what I mean? Right. Or right. way too late to quit. Right. Uh, that is, uh, man, that's rough. Yeah, it's like you're you're so far into something, and it's I've had people come up to me and say how much that song means to them. Or relationship. Well, we doubt you know, relationship. I haven't thought of it. A like lot of that. the ladies just nodded their head. Don't <laughs> hey, don't be so obvious. <laughs> yeah, it's it's definitely applicable to many facets of life for sure. Yeah, it is. Now, okay, so so a line like that, right? That obviously, you know, that's a line where y you just, you, you turn it. You stick the knife in and then you turn it, right? right? Right. You have a knack for saying things very clearly and, and doing that sort of thing. Like, is that something you like focus on in every song or do those just, do you somehow have this cosmic connection that they just drop right in? I'd love to say cosmic connection. That sounds <laughs> great. Um, I don't know. It's very much a... Uh, a process of just sitting there and trying to get the best you can and a lot of times it's an accident like I, when that line happened I didn't really think much of it honestly pardon my French but I was just trying to rhyme with shit and uh, quit and shit go together pardon, pardon me um, but uh, I don't know yeah I just it's like a happy accident I guess all right and and how much how much writing do you do on your own versus do you find yourself getting in the room with other guys, you know, or other other artists and, and writing? Yeah, it's um, almost entirely by myself, but um, I'm learning to write with other people and um, I've actually had some really positive experiences. Um, I know William Clark Green was here a few weeks ago, or back in December rather, and, and he played a song that he and... Uh, Josh Greider and Drew Kennedy and I had written together, and uh, that was which one was that? What's the name uh, of that? Me one? and her and you. And, uh, Let I, me tell you something. Yeah. I can't play it, but I, I know. But I listen, I, I yeah. will tell you this: go uh, look up William Clark Green. Go to the next waltz, which is a series that that Bruce Robeson puts out, 
go to the next waltz and watch William Clark Green sing this song. We had the opportunity with our film crew that's here tonight to be up there in Steamboat uh, doing all the filming for Bruce. I'm not, you told the owner of the bar upstairs a little while ago you weren't kissing butt, and I'm not kissing butt either. That's the best song I heard at Steamboat this year. Thanks. Yeah. Well, I didn't do very much heavy lifting on it. That is an amazing it, song. It was a really cool thing to be part of, and there's that video you see Kelly and Bruce really get into it and sing harmonies, and to see them have that reaction to it and to be part of it, 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 it shows you how much water it holds. But uh, I remember Josh Greider was in the room, and he said, uh, holds me like a prison, haunts me like a ghost, talking about this feeling for um, how he feels about this woman, and it was just like, oh, man, you know, the hammer dropped. It was an incredible yeah. line. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great song. Okay, yeah. so if you were to uh, have every recording that uh, John has done, at least the ones that are here tonight, it'd be four. Are there any hidden tapes that you just try to keep out of the public eye? Uh, 100%. <laughs> 100%. All right. We'll all be looking. We'll uh, all be looking for those. Um, why didn't you hide this one? That's, that's kind of an interesting... Uh, for those of you that can see on video, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is... Uh, they just released on Netflix a documentary. <laughs> and man, that's him. That's Bundy yeah. right there. Yeah. So that, that might have been the biggest mistake I've, I've made. Um. <laughs> I love it. Okay, since I'm picking on it, was, uh, this was an EP, right? Just a five-song EP? That was the starter package. Yeah. This was the very first? It was the very uh, first one, yeah. Is there still one on here that you play every night? There is. Well, play it better than the picture on the front. Yeah, okay. Yes. <laughs> so just, just real quick, the picture on the front is, uh, I, I, when I first moved to Austin, I worked at a call center, and a uh, real wonderful job. I didn't last very long. Um, but for our ID badges, I uh, was like, oh, I'll grow a mustache and comb my hair to the side. And uh, for some stupid reason, I chose to make that my album cover, too. And... Uh, <laughs> Things I'd like to have back for a thousand, you know. <laughs> I went to school in Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, very, very much felt like a fish out of water the entire time. There was a girl from uh, Midland, Texas that I was really, really fond of, and she did not reciprocate the feeling. Um, so I decided to write a song about her. And uh, the big mistake I made was telling all my friends who the song was about. And, uh, just things I won't do again. Yeah, you can clap. I appreciate it. <laughs> For the upper echelon high society people of the world, this is called Midland. You come from West Texas in a Mercedes Benz with your Louis Vuitton and your debutante friends. Your stepmom came with you to watch you unpack. She'll go home in the Gulf Stream when it is time to go back out to Midland. Father turning crude to gasoline in the great 1980s when the boom came to town and all them big old buildings they just shot out of the ground out in the middle. Your 
houses for Greek sisterhood. How about them tri deltas? We all knew you would. You are all set to major in fashion merchandise, but you'll drop it in the spring for a boy from Alamo Heights. Of course, he will be handsome and he will have a good last name. Y'all can sit in Jerry's box at the Cowboys football game. Take him home for Christmas. Take him out to see the rigs where the roughnecks are on the auger and they dance their black gold jigs out in Midland. Some years down the road With your scripture rehearsed You'll baptize that newborn baby At the Presbyterian Church He will be too young to know What is underneath that soil You did not either So anoint his head with oil Play this song at frat parties and sorority parties, and uh, they hire you for 90 minutes, and uh, they couldn't care about 87 of those minutes. But when I play this song, they go absolutely bananas. They sing along, and it's just really strange because I'm just making fun of them the whole time. <laughs> Thanks a lot. So you can hear that one on West Texas vernacular. Now, if I'm getting my... Uh, Chronology, right? Was Departures next? Actually, it was the uh, High Plains Alchemy. I was still using all three of my names and coming up with uh, ridiculously sounding album titles. So, uh, yeah. That was the next one, yeah. A guy in a field with a guitar. Like, that hasn't been done before on an album cover, if you know what I'm saying. Well, look. <laughs> it was an upgrade. <laughs> I'm giving him a hard time. Look, man, you know, this is, uh, what's, what's the guy's name that starred in the Bundy show? Ted? No. no. Sorry. Sorry. Who's the guy that played him? Now I'm drawing a blank. By the way, the radio program is edited for rebroadcast, so anytime I say something stupid, enjoy it tonight because you'll never hear it again. Yeah. Uh, Efron, Zach Efron. See? <laughs> That's a great comparison. See? I like that. Let's go with that. <laughs> Zach Efron Let's and go John Bauman as Ted Bundy. <laughs> I, like it. I like that, yeah. All right, well, let's talk about High Plains for a minute. Um, I, I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in and ask you, like, relive the phone call for us yeah. or the moment yeah. when you found out that Gulf Moon had been cut by Kenny Chesney? Well, um, that was actually two different phone calls. Okay. Uh, the first time, well, I'll just quickly tell the story. Uh, we were playing a gig in Wichita Falls, which was uh, highly uh, forgettable, and um, had a bit to drink that night. And uh, I had known for, a, for maybe a couple years that, that Chesney had recorded my song, Gulf Moon, which, by the way, was a song that I really, really worked hard at trying to just beat every line, beat every line. Um, 
And I had found out that Kenny had liked the song, and uh, I was just flabbergasted because all I really had, had wanted at that point was some, some recognition, I guess, or, you know, you just want a little feather in your cap for your, for your resume. Um, so it was a big deal for me. Um, but I, I got a phone call in Wichita Falls the next morning after some drinking that uh, Kenny had changed his mind. And it wasn't going to be on the record. And uh, I'd kind of gotten the green light to tell everybody and their brother that it was going to happen. Like, I'd gone on the radio all proud, you know. Um, I got a Kenny Chesney cut. And then uh, it wasn't happening. And I was just extremely depressed. And that was kind of the genesis for writing what became the Proving Grounds record um, with the Here I Come kind of a thing. And then um, I guess a couple years goes by and Hurricane Irma happens in the Virgin Islands. And um, Kenny decides to make a hurricane relief record where all the proceeds go back to um, uh, helping the Virgin Islands um, come through the devastation. And um, Harvey, it also happened. Um, so uh, I got another phone call, a second phone call, that it was going to be on the record. And, um, you know, I'd been through this once before, so I was kind of like, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, but then... We got closer and closer to release date, and I started seeing a press release, and I saw that it was track seven, and um, I was just beside myself. And I hadn't heard it, so uh, I heard it with everybody else when it came out on July 27th, not like I know the date in the moment, but July 27th, <laughs> 2018, uh, I, my wife and I went to the liquor store and spent about $120 in booze to celebrate. Uh, <laughs> but I, I just remember listening to it for the first time in my backyard, and I'd had quite a few cocktails because I was just very, very happy, and I remember just, this is ridiculous, but I just went out in my backyard and cried <laughs> listening to it because I, I was just so happy. And um, to, to know not only that the song had been cut and not to give up on, on something, but also know that the song was actually going to do some real good in the real world um, was, a, was a nice thing. Um, so that's, that's kind of the long and short of it, but it was an incredible, incredible journey of it not happening and then happening. So. so, okay, so so Chesney has an affinity for, you know, songs that, that have to do with yeah, things that are nautical, but where where did that idea come from for you? Yeah, so uh, I was just trying to paint the best picture I could of a night in Galveston, Texas, um, and I'll be there tomorrow night, uh, but I was just trying to think of what, is, what does the Balinese Pier look like, what does the Strand look like? What does a guy looking, looking at, at the night sky think of when he's just kind of reflecting on everything he's seen and his place in the world? And um, it's, it's more of a prose poetry type song. It's definitely not a uh, she thinks my tractor's sexy song, but uh, I'll take what I can get. So yeah, I was just kind of thinking of a guy's place, in, place in, in the world and specifically on the coast in Galveston, Texas was my, was my backdrop. Yeah. That's awesome. Would you play that one for us? I'd be happy to. <laughs> Shoot horse and pool while the barmaid wishes a place were half full. She works the jar with a discount flirt in her faded Houston oiler shirt. While an old crow sings down on a stage, thumbing the chords on a crinkle page, he plays the Zeve on tunes beneath the Gulf Moon. They go walk down along the wall They go right on past the carnival Hand in hand with the keeper kind The kind that ties to the ties that bind They don't care for the carny man Or the fortune teller Who reads your hand You just be lying for a bungalow Where the curtains all flutter And candles glow in the heart of June Neath the Gulf Moon And here I'm on a midnight porch Looking up at a butane torch 
that hangs behind a black expanse where the stars flicker, planets dance. It's probably time I pack it in with a glass half full of Jameson. Well, I was born to crew. I might as well need the golf moon. By the jetty near the Balinese pier, the curmudgeons all drink the yellow belly beer. And they bitch about the price of gas and the fish that they cannot seem to catch. They blend it on the islands way down south, from the Bayou Marsh and the Delta Mouth, where the choppers are rolling, tankers come in the midnight days for the oil drum they cannot leave too soon. Need the Gulf Moon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Great song, man! Thank you very much. I really appreciate it very much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to use I'm going to use this moment. This is my public service announcement. Okay, now here's the public service announcement. It, it is uh, it is a public service announcement about the perpetuation of songwriting in America, actually in the whole world, in our culture. And it has to do with the way music is consumed today. Now, I've heard that song many times, both by John and by Kenny Chesney. And the number of times that I have listened to that song, and I like that song, has made John about four cents. <laughs> You're not through, wrong. Through me listening to it on <laughs> Apple Music and Spotify. Okay? Now, here's, here's the one thing I want to encourage everybody to do here tonight. If you want to help perpetuate songwriting, not just through this guy, but in the culture in general, here is the best thing that you can do. Number one, come to the show like you did tonight. That helps. Number two, um, if you go right over to that merch table after the show, not only will John be there to say hello and shake your hand and tell you thanks for coming to the show, but he actually has faded oiler t-shirts right. as mentioned that's in right. that song that's right right over there uh to sell to you and his music gets 100 percent minus the t-shirt cost okay <laughs> to put gas in the tank to go down to the next show so one thing i really want to encourage you to do it's awesome to walk out to our vehicles and turn on our favorite streaming services and listen to our favorite artists and our songs, the number one way we can help them keep moving down the road is to stop by the merch table, tell them thanks, buy a koozie, buy a sticker, buy whatever. You think it's a small deal, it's a big deal. And if you think about it from a business perspective, if I told you some of your customers are gonna buy things that are a thousand percent margin and some of your customers are gonna buy things that are point zero 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 one two percent margin, you'd understand what I was talking about. And that actually is what we're talking about. So go pick something up at the merch table on the way out. Don't think that He's retiring because of that Kenny Chesney cut. Because we're not retiring yet, right? No. No. Okay. I appreciate it. Just I, double check it. I appreciate it. I'm just really glad I haven't gotten a, a cease and desist letter either from Bud Adams on the copyright infringement that I'm 100% guilty of. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, by the way. Yeah. That just really uh, increased the need for us to sell all of those T-shirts tonight. We need to get them off the market. Got to get rid of them. We need to get. Are y'all doing okay tonight? Is everybody having a good time so far? Okay. I I, I told you you were going to be active participants in the show tonight. So this is a moment where I need you. Okay. Um, we've got to do a liner to kick off the podcast and the radio show. So I need you to say, "This is uh, John Bauman, and you're li uh, Hold on. 
I got to get it right. This is John Bauman, and this is real life, real music. And then I need you guys to go absolutely nuts. Can y'all do that? I'm trusting you. I'm trusting you that you're going to do it. Okay. Uh, so this is John Bauman, and this is real life, real music. All right. Here we go. This is John Bauman, and this is real life, real music. Perfect. That was great. That was great. See, cue the big music, and then we're into the radio show. You're absolutely going to love it. That's great. Okay, perfect. All right, so uh, let's see. What do I want to ask you about next? Let's, uh, let's go to Proving Grounds, and I want you to just pick one that you want to play us off of Proving Grounds, which, by the way, you know the the all black suit in yeah. front of the theater. Yeah. That's that's good. That's really good. I like that. I need an A and R department badly. That's a good photo, man. I like that's, that one. It's all right. Beard's like a little thick. One. I don't know. Makes me think of the Bee Gees. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm done putting my face on the front of album covers. I'm going. <laughs> I'm going all art from here on out. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Come yeah. on. Pick one. Pick one. You. Oh, oh, I know. Okay, let me ask you about this. So, I mean, being such a uh, being being such a prolific songwriter, and 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 I'm not saying that just to you know uh, uh, you know give you the big head, but obviously it it is the craft is extremely important to you. You you pay attention to it, and you're not just trying to finish a song just to finish it. So I want to know, like, what goes uh, into you choosing a cover song uh, to put on a record? Um, that was uh, my good friend and producer um, who I've worked with on uh, several projects. Uh, you know, being a songwriter, we, we also play a lot of honky tonks and whatnot, and we needed a little bit of a... You know, pep in the step, if you will, something for something for the for the nightclub. So, um, I can't say that was 100% my choice, but right. uh, I bent and uh, you know, it's I, I'm happy with it. it. It was cool. It's been it's been fun for when we play festivals and things like that. But uh, you, you, there's a little bit of back and forth on agreeing to do it, if you will. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. So that's a Kyle. I'm not going to play that one yeah. tonight. Pretty on much. The songwriter show. <laughs> See, Pretty look, much. That, that's you. code. I read the subtitles, you know, <laughs> when songwriters are talking. So um, we'll pick another one off of uh, uh, Proving Grounds for sure, us. Sure. Um, this song is, uh, I put, I think, track nine on the record, Proving Grounds, and kind of, kind of stuck it on the B-sides. Um, but... Uh, I've always been blown away at people who can fall in love in a bar. I just think it's impressive. Um, like um, <laughs> flirting or whatever, talking to girl, whatever, it's a very difficult thing. Um, thankfully, I don't have to do it anymore. But um, anyhow, this song is called Lonely in Bars. And uh, it's, uh, thank you. It's all right. You can keep doing. Um, uh, I do almost have to interrupt right there, though, and say that as a guy that's been married for a lot longer than you yes, have, yeah, yeah. you better still sharpen those flirting skills and flirt with your wife as right, often right, as you can. Right, right. Amen. All right. Amen. <laughs> so uh, this song, uh, we stuck it at track nine and didn't really think too much of it, and it turned out to be one of the, the more popular songs, if you will, from that record. So, so here it is. <laughs> Over twilight drinks in Dallas, I was sure that you were taken. But a vacant left ring finger had me happily mistaken. Even though you spoke of an older man and being on and off with him, you swore the fire burned out and was doused a years ago. I didn't have the gumption to articulate my. That I could see my hands around you with grace and precision. The lights off and the door locked, and our hearts are beating strong. My 
greatest fear would be the morning coming on. You say you don't want to be alone. Well, I don't want to leave here on my own. I will close your tab and hail a cab and we can make this moment ours. And finally say goodbye to be lonely in bars I don't mean to be too forward but I don't want you to disappear in some crowded neon haze that reeks of lust and beer your history's a mystery and I don't need to know it all but I hate to see you forlorn in the throes of a last call you say you don't want to be alone Well, I don't want to leave here on my own Take a shot, see what we've got And make this moment ours And finally say goodbye to being lonely in bars I'll pay your tab and hail a cab And we can make this moment ours Finally say goodbye to being lonely in bars So here we are in Dallas and moving on to midnight drinks As you check your phone again my heart on sinks I can't make up your mind for you but you know just where I stand across the table with an offer the embarrassment and be damned you say you don't want to be alone well I don't want to leave here on my own take a shot see what we've got Finally say goodbye to being lonely in bars I'll pay your tab and hail a cab And we can make this moment ours Finally say goodbye to being lonely in bars All right, thanks a lot. Thank you. Man, very nice. All right, so I'm gonna, we're going to stay on that record for just a minute, but I want to tell, tell you a quick story. Sure. So uh, you and I talked upstairs just briefly about uh, a few different artists that I think we, we, we both hold some mutual respect for. And uh, one of them is a guy by the name of Sean McConnell, yes. who uh, uh, is an yes. amazing songwriter and yes. singer. And the first time Sean McConnell did this show, the stage was on the other wall at do, -Si -Do back over there. How many of you came to a show before they reversed this place? Anybody? Okay. So you know what I'm talking about. This, the, the stage was back over there, and we were facing this way. And uh, Sean, uh, Sean did... A song called Somewhere Beautiful. Oh, great song. And at the end of the song, he went into this medley of this song that I remember hearing in church as a kid. Yeah. And he just started singing over and over again, It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. And by the time he got to the end of that song, uh, I couldn't even speak coming back in to... Uh, the conversation um, because my father-in-law and my mother-in-law, they were sitting on this row right here. We would have been looking from that direction. And we had just uh, gotten the diagnosis. It was the first show she had come to uh, since we got the diagnosis that she had uh, stage four brain cancer. And that was the last show that she came to because four months later she was, she was gone. 
And I'll never forget that night. Uh, I'll never forget those words that Sean was singing. Then I'll never forget having to really for the first time that close to me go through the process of how do you even reconcile maybe things that you believed uh, against a, a loss like that and, and uh, just learning about grief for the first time and, and all of those things that really up until that point, you really felt pretty innocent and naive uh, uh, against those things. And uh, you've been, you've been transparent enough and gracious enough for all of us that have experienced loss like that uh, to re record a song like Old Stone Church. And, and I wonder if you'd share, you know, a, a little bit, um, maybe a little bit of the behind the scenes uh, of, of that song and uh, then play that one for us. Certainly. Um... Yeah, my old man was uh, probably at times my greatest enemy, but ultimately my best friend. And uh, 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 well, he was an attorney and a family man, and um, very very involved. Like we were one of those families that you know dinners at six thirty every night, and very active in my, me and my two sisters. Uh, lives and good husband and a picture of health and uh he got diagnosed with stage four uh brain cancer and um just so weird for a 62 year old man that's picture of health to, to get a diagnosis like that yeah. and so after that he would we, we went to church every sunday i never wanted to go ever but uh we went to church every single sunday no matter what rain or shine and uh after he got diagnosed, my mom told me that he would go sit in the in the sanctuary at First Presbyterian downtown in San Antonio. Uh, he would just sit there by himself um, several days a week and just kind of reflect on life or think about where he's going next. Um, and that always kind of struck me funny. Um, but I remember getting the phone call from my mom when, when my dad had passed. And, uh, and I think the next three or four months, you know, I spent kind of medicating, if you will. Um, mm -hmm. With, with things that aren't really good for you. But um, everybody deals with loss in their own way, and that's how I was chose to deal with it. And um, I, I guess that's kind of the, the story. Looking back now, it's kind of like time, time does heal wounds, and I think, my, I think it's been six years now since he passed away. But uh, it's a very, very confusing thing. I mean, everybody goes through it. Everybody has a cancer story. Everybody knows somebody who's lost somebody or somebody's lost. No, nobody's immune to it. Um, but I just, it was, it was uh, very good for me to get this song out. And it was hard, but, and I wrote it in probably 20 minutes in my hmm. bedroom. But it just, it was just so good for, for my heart and my, my mind in a way. So, yeah. Well, well. Okay, yeah. Thanks for listening, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, sorry to bum you out on a Wednesday night. <laughs> this is Old Stone Church. When my father got sick, my father found God At the old stone church off 12th and Claude He said, forgive me, Lord, I know I'm flawed When my father got sick, my father found God When my mother discovered the bell would toll she displayed grace with self-control Sang a lamentation for her husband's soul When my mother discovered the bell would toll When he died I cursed the Holy Ghost With a bird in the air and a whiskey toast Why'd I lose a man that 
When he died, I cursed the Holy Ghost. He died, I cursed the Holy Ghost. When my sisters learned they went to his side Before he could be the father of either bride Thankful for the years he packed inside When my sisters learned they went to his side well, Me, I just got drunk and stoned Shut down the shutters and shut off the phone Wish the world would leave me all alone Me, I just got drunk and stoned Me, I just got drunk and stoned When my father passed on, I came to find God At the old stone church off 12th and Claude I said, forgive me, Lord, I know I'm flawed When my father passed on, I came to find God My father passed on, I came to find God Thank you so much. Thank you. Man, I'm glad you got that one out. I appreciate it. Yeah. Thanks, you. Yeah. Can I play you one? I would love nothing more. <laughs> you know, you were talking about uh, earlier, you talked about, um, I'm coming a long way there. You, you were talking about just uh, being in the moment and talking about perspective. And, uh, man, nothing gives us perspective like what you just sang about. Um, this thing is loud. I wrote, uh, <clears throat> I wrote this song just to remind me, you know, it, it's... Uh, I'm a little bit ADD by nature anyway, so that doesn't make it easier when I've got, you know, a cell phone that beeps every time I get a junk email or a text or any of that. We're so accessible today. I think one of the hardest things is to uh, just remain present to anything. And uh, I, I wrote this song to just uh, remind myself this thing's just about, can you just turn this down on the monitor just a little bit? You hear that one to take off there? You won't hear this part in the radio broadcast either. There you go. If I live for the moment, I'll never grow old. Cause the past is gone and the future's untold And it's a fleeting thing to try and hold But if I live for the moment I'll never grow old Cause all I got is here and now if I could lock that in my mind somehow Cause time ain't borrowed, time ain't sold And if I live for the moment, I'll never grow old 
Cause I can close my eyes and slow the whole world down But just breathing in and then breathing out And if you ask me what time it is, I'll say It's right now I won't curse the lines upon my face If I'm not lost in yesterday And the mirror quickly loses hold And if I'm living mom and I'll never grow I can close my eyes and slow the whole world down But just breathing in and then breathing out And if you ask me what time it is, I'll say It's right now It's right now And on that bright and shiny day Covered in amazing grace When my name is called upon the road If I live through the moment I'll never grow old Yeah, if I live through the moment I'll never grow old if I live for the moment, I'll never grow. Kyle Hutton, everybody. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. What do you want to play next? I've been leading you all around the place. Why don't you just pick one that you want to lay on us? All right. I'd say we get one more out of you, that would be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to twist my arm too hard. <laughs> um. So, yeah, we just finished making a uh, record for the second time this year, if you know what I'm saying. So I'm like 100% out of money, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. What he's saying is stop by the merch table on yeah, the way out. <laughs> please do, please do. Um. This song is a uh, is a uh, one of my new ones. Um, it's three different uses of the word country. Uh, country in terms of music. Country in terms of uh, a rural landscape, and country in terms of the United States. So, um, somewhat of a songwriting exercise, if you will. It's called the uh, the country doesn't sound the same. On my father's stereo every Saturday it was back when steel and fiddle had their time to interplay. It was my first drive in that old car killed the battery. Listening till the sun came up on a summer night's dream. Songs for the working class and those looking for love They took you to a place deep inside or up above I don't hear them on my FM radio I don't know why they all had to go My father would call Shame. The country doesn't sound the same. There's a hard hat crew laying tar up by the gate. They 
don't care whose land they carve as long as their checks aren't laid. Tax bond brought the highway and a hundred mobile homes. They're clearing space every day for commercial zones. I can hear it out the kitchen window. The farm ain't the quiet place I used to know. Everybody's headed west to stake their claim. The country doesn't sound the same Times are always changing Are the good times gone? No more open sky above me No more soul left in the song I know it don't do no good to complain The country doesn't sound the same Fear we're living in the strangest of times Where it seems like everybody is on opposing sides As the noise runs round the clock and no one can cut through I don't know when this will end I don't know what we can do I lie awake at night and wonder how don't know what to think of us now It doesn't do no good in laying blame The country doesn't sound the same The country doesn't sound the same Thanks, everybody. And that one will be out when? Uh, if, we can, if we can stay on schedule, September. Maybe June. We'll see. We'll see what's happening. But it, we did just record it, and uh, it'll be this year for sure. So. <laughs> uh, okay. Every once in a while, I get texted interview questions from uh, very reliable sources. And my sources want to know... Man, I don't know how to f say this question without making somebody mad. Um, are you glad that when Kenny cut your song, he didn't use like snap tracks or? <laughs> that any... dude could have used whatever he wanted. Uh, there you have it. There's the answer. Yeah, yeah. Bro yeah. it up. Bro man. it up. Do it. I don't care. However you want to do yeah. it. Okay. No. Well, he there's did... the answer. I think they. Uh, I think they 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 were they did right by the song. Absolutely. They they did. I mean, somebody studied what you did on the guitar and yeah. Well, I'd like to take credit, but um I wrote the lyrics and the music, but um when we were in the studio that it's one of the lift the lit guitar licks was one that they was one of the studio guys that came up with part, parts of that lick and I really shouldn't say this. I should really take all the credit. Um, <laughs> But they took the exact lick, and I remember I was watching a YouTube video on how to actually play Kenny Chesney's version of my own song that I'd written. Uh, it's <laughs> true story. It's very weird. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, that's why I play the song I wrote. Yeah. I wouldn't know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I know either. Yeah. All right. I will play you one more. Please. Uh, and then you're going to play a couple more before we, before we have to call this uh, taping. Quit. Have y'all had a good time tonight so far? Thanks for being here, everybody. It's been really, really fun. Appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, I started this song pulling out of the pulling out of the driveway of uh, 
one of my son's friends who uh, enlisted in the Marine Corps. And uh, he had asked my son to come to the ceremony with uh, his family. And so I dropped my son off in the driveway. And before I got out of the subdivision, this, this chorus had come to me. And then uh, I sat down with a guy by the name of Drew Walmack. And we, we finished this song. And we haven't, uh, Drew and I did a little demo of it, but we haven't, it, it, it hadn't found its way on any of our projects yet. So uh, this one's still in the hopper. <clears throat> There's a truck in the driveway Leaking oil Waiting for a young man On foreign soil A dad on the front porch With his face to the breeze And mom in kitchen down on her knees again well sometimes his best friend stops by just to say hi runs his hand down the side of that truck as he passes by and through the window as they're talking on the couch inside He sees that worn out windshield sticker Semper Fi And in the blink of a night Things get real, real fast And nothing looks the same as things looked in the past And the flag down at the schoolhouse, it still flies the same. But freedom is different with skin in the game. Well, life is easy when it's fireworks and apple pie. Learning what it all means As the parade goes by But there are some things You can't fully understand Till the taking of an oath And the raising of a hand Then in the blink of a night Things get real, real fast And nothing looks the same as things looked in the past And the anthem down at the ball game It just don't sound the same Cause freedom is different With skin in the game Yeah, and you don't know the cost Till there's a part of you that could get lost and In the blink of a night Things get real real fast and nothing looks the same as things looked in the past And now that granite wall is more than just some list of names Cause freedom is different With skin in the game if freedom is different with skin in the game.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, John, I want to tell you thank you again for taking time out of your schedule and stopping here in the woodlands on your way down to Galveston, Texas. This has been a real treat. I've enjoyed every bit of it, and I uh, can't thank you enough for having me. Well, it's my pleasure. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's play a couple more songs first, and I'm going to let you pick both of them. I'm not going to ask you any questions and just let you decide how you want to land the plane, and you're going you're gonna to hang out for a while and sign some T-shirts and that good stuff? Absolutely. Perfect. Absolutely. I don't really know what I'm doing right now, but uh, and I don't want to ask for a request because I might get met with silence, and that's always uncomfortable, if you know what I'm saying. <laughs> what do you got? All right. Uh, that's almost the name of the song. But, uh, all right, all right. You got me covered. Uh, this song's about hunting and fishing, both things that I'm very terrible at. Um, <laughs> so I just did my best to pose and act like I know what I'm talking about. To hell with cabin fever, the winter and the cold. I can't live like no hermit, I will die. Before I'm old, I got chains around my tires, a 12 and 20 gauge, a mountain full of moose and elk. Well, on the range, it's a nice night in Wyoming. I spend some time alone. It's a nice night in Wyoming to be the North Country's own. Leaving in the morning, I got a ride in the line. A stream no one knows about past that Laramie sign. It's got 10,000 salmon. I've seen them suckers run from the Snake River and Idaho to the city of the sun. It's a nice night in Wyoming. I spend some time alone. It's a nice night in Wyoming To be the North Country's own After two days in the pine I found my center once again On that rocky mountain line I'll be back before I know it For the fall starts to turn Into winter Full of misery I'm gonna let that timber burn It's a nice night in Wyoming Spend some time alone It's a nice night in Wyoming to be the North Country's own.
tu zong. All right. Thanks a lot. Have you guys had a good time tonight? Yeah? Okay. If you, uh, if you like the format, if you like getting to kind of go behind the songs a little bit, I've got some, some other wonderful guests coming up. Miss Jamie Wilson will be here. Jamie Lynn Wilson will be here with us in a couple of weeks, and you can grab tickets for that. Um, we've got uh, Dalton Domino will be coming back and joining us. Uh, and I can't announce it yet online. By the time the podcast comes on, it will be fine. But uh, a hometown boy with a brand new record out, Mr. Jack Ingram's going to be here with us in June. And so, uh, you know, I always get the best seat in the house, but you can have the second best seat in the house. And uh, just look on your upcoming event sheet. Come back and see us again. We appreciate you being here. You know, this little midweek show, somehow we figured out how to keep it going for 12 years, and it's because folks like you come out and want to hear what these guys have to say. So thank you for being here tonight. And, uh, man, John, once again, thank you. I hope you'll come back every time you put out a record, every time you have something to talk about. We want you to come hang out with us. You want to finish this out this evening? Sure, sure. Can I play another new song, if that's all right, or you want to hear something? We love exclusives. Uh, my grandmother has a ranch in uh, Lockhart, Texas, and somebody's trying to put a landfill behind it, and uh, nobody wants a landfill behind uh, their grandmother's ranch, if you know what I'm saying. Um, uh, so this is, this is my protest song. It's called uh, Grandfather's Grandson. South Texas dream was a working man's scheme Granddaddy made good on the future he'd seen Eight hundred acres where the cotton was flush And the oil was his before the rush And I know my grandfather's grandson And this land ain't getting sold off to no one while the turbines encroach and the city boys poach and the lights of town are approaching till then I'll be here. My grandfather's grandson The company men, they are back once again They're trying to buy up whatever they can But if they darken my door Another time more This shotgun in my lap Will be hard to ignore Cause I'm a here My grandfather's grandson In this land Ain't getting sold off to no one What the businessmen see can't be taken from me And one day it's my son's for the keeping Until then I'll be here My grandfather's grandson Nothing for you to drill, no landfill to fill, no interstate textile proposal, no high rising crane, no dairy queen chain. This will never be your garbage disposal as long as I'm a 
as long as I'm here. My grandfather's grandson. Thanks for listening tonight, everybody. Appreciate it very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. John Bauman. Kyle Hutton, Real Life, Real Music.